right. And now that we're right, you don't even want to put us on TV and tell us we're right. You want to put Obama on TV and laud him. And I think people are starting to get the message. You know, they're starting to understand it used to go right over their head when Ron Paul talked about the Fed. And I keep it very simple. I just say the following. The Fed is the worst of all possible worlds. It is a quasi-public private institution. It is public in the fact that it's got the power of the United States government behind it. It can do whatever it wants, but it's private. The U.S. government and the U.S. citizens can't audit it. We can't hold it accountable. It was created in 1913 by Congress, but here's the thing. That means it was in effect when we had the Great Depression. They didn't see it coming. They didn't stop it. They didn't prevent it. And they did nothing to make it better. The Depression lasted over 10 years because of the actions of the Fed. And guess what the Fed and FDR did? The same things that Barack Obama is doing today. Raise taxes dramatically, raise spending dramatically, raise minimum wage dramatically, and make and put in all kinds of laws that protect unions and make it easier to unionize. Those were the four responses of FDR, and they're the four predictable responses of Barack Obama. The Fed has no audits, no oversight, no accountability, the ability to print money out of thin air, and the ability to run the printing press for any president or politician that needs money to be created out of thin air to legally bribe his constituents. And that's what has happened. That's what is Fox News about Freedom Watch with Judge Napolitano and tell them we want that to become not a web TV show, we want them to move it up to a big time libertarian talk show. This is the way we're gonna make a difference. You need to send letters to Fox News lauding Glenn Beck, who by the way has come out and said, I am a libertarian. So he's the most high profile libertarian on TV in the United States of America. So those are the things I think we can all do. I hope you can all agree that it's good to get someone who's high profile uh, and high energy and has a colorful message, I think a dynamic message on TV. And I hope you'll all support me in the future. Thank you, God bless you. Yes, sir. Got questions? If California is going to start selling and taxing marijuana, yes. does that mean the DEA is going to be arresting Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> nah. You know, it's funny. A good friend of mine is Steve Covey. I'm sure a lot of you in the room know Steve. And Steve just emailed me today. He said I led the fight to legalize medical marijuana in the state of California. And I just emailed him, you know, silly me. I always say Obama's a liar. He smiles to your face. But then he does something different behind your back. But I thought on the issue of marijuana, because he was a guy that used to smoke it, and he was a guy that used to do lots of other drugs too. I kind of thought he had a warm spot in his heart for marijuana. And he has announced that the DEA now has rules in place that they're not going to go after legal medical dispensaries. That's what he said out loud. Well, he lied about that too. Steve Cubby emailed me this morning and said, the U.S. attorney in California just announced yesterday that he doesn't, uh, the clause Obama used is they've got to be in compliance with federal and state law. And the U.S. attorney doesn't believe that any dispensary in the state of California is in compliance with either state or federal law, even though state law says you can do it, and they're doing it, and they have licenses. So even that was a lie. And even that is, you know, people who smoke marijuana aren't even safe, even with a prescription, even in California that passed it from the clutches of big government and Barack Obama. It's a sad state of affairs. Uh, any other questions? I'd be glad to answer any at all. Yes, sir. In Nevada, about 75% of the land is owned by the federal government. Correct. Correct. going to kick them out. Uh, well, I hope I will. <laughs> you're right, and, and, and we're fighting in Nevada to get a lot of it back. But uh, you know, there's nothing I can do unless I get elected, and that's the thing I try and impress upon libertarians. Unless we elect libertarians, we're going to have zero effect on the national and local stage. Zero. And that's the problem with libertarianism: is we haven't elected people. We got to elect them, you know. And the Conservative Party of New York State is my model, and they started electing people, and they elected a lot of them. And by the way, I got to tell you what I think the model of the Libertarian Party should be. The Conservative Party did elect James Buckley, conservative U.S. Senate. But they also passed a resolution. If they didn't like the Republican or the Democrat, they ran their own candidate, just like we did. But if they liked the Republican or Democrat, who came before them and got grilled by the Conservative Party and had to tell them what he really believed, they would endorse that candidate. And so they started endorsing a lot of conservative Republicans, as well they should have. And they didn't run a candidate against them, and they helped elect them. And guess what? This little party of rebels with pitchforks that couldn't elect anybody for the last 28 years, three decades in New York, 
not one Republican has won statewide office without conservative party endorsement. You can't get elected in New York State without conservative endorsement. And conservatives, although we as libertarians don't like their views on social issues, fiscally, they're our brothers and sisters. And they hold the feet to the fire of Republican politicians, and they won't endorse them unless they are for less spending and lower taxes and get in office and do that. So why don't we as libertarians endorse Republicans and Democrats who think like us occasionally? I think it's a mistake. Like, like, like Ron Paul, you know, like Ron Paul. Because to be honest with you, I don't know if it's possible <coughs> for me to be elected in a, to a statewide office like U.S. Senate or Governor of Nevada as just a libertarian. I could do a Jesse Von Ventura drive. But I think if I ran as a Ron Paul Republican with libertarian endorsement, I think I'd have a good shot. Right now, people from all over the country, most of the Republicans are emailing me, begging me to run against Harry Reid for the United States Senate as a Republican. I haven't made my decision yet what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm really fighting for 2012 and the Libertarian Party presidential nomination. So I don't think I want to do it. But having said that, there is nobody that has stepped forward to run against Harry Reid. No one in the state of Nevada. And Harry Reid's approval ratings are actually lower than any politician in the state of Nevada. With nobody running against him, he's losing right now in the poll. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? He's losing. So I think there's a chance, you know, maybe even if I ran as a, as a Jesse the Body Ventura third party, you know, candidate for the United States Senate, maybe I could be elected Libertarian United States Senate. Possible, but unlikely for one reason. Republicans write big checks, and Libertarians don't. We don't get big checks, and we have no infrastructure. Here's what I found running as your vice presidential candidate. I flew all over the country, and everywhere I went, can you imagine flying thousands of miles, and everywhere you go, far from home, there's 25 people waiting for you, right? Is that what's here, about 25 people? You're not gonna win elections with 25 people in a room. You can only win elections, take it from me, a guy who used to be a Republican, that went to Republican fundraisers. Republican fundraisers charge $1,000 a ticket, and they get 1,000 people in the room. The whole place, everyone pulls up in Mercedes and BMWs and Ferraris, and they all walk in. Libertarian fundraisers get 25 people who write $10 checks. That's why we don't win elections. You can't win unless you have money. You've got to raise money, and you've got to get more people to the event. The only guy with a libertarian mindset I've ever seen that raised money and got people to events was Ron Paul. Having said that, he got about 3% of the vote. It's not enough. 3%. It's not enough. Still didn't win any elections. But he sure did show Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> Rudy made fun of him, and he outraised him by 10, and he got more votes than Giuliani. Amazing. Ron Paul did a great job. Any other questions? Yes? I was thinking about waiting and money. What was one year after? But considering your last answer, yes. My husband is running in Minneapolis for city council. Campaign for liberty. As a libertarian, I assume. No, as an independent. Oh, okay. Campaign for Liberty doesn't endorse any and he told us to talk to the women now. Who has not answered any questions, any phone calls in the open for almost four years? Apparently nobody wants to deal with the people who see compromises in both the United States and the States, which is also what we heard from the NRA. We can't even get a list from the NRA because it's a little city council race and they don't have time for that, even though there's nothing else going on this year except little city council races. Have any suggestions for we'll get them in? It's not just the money, the support would be nice too. Uh, you know, I wish I had a suggestion. You're leaving me speechless, which is very rare. Uh, you know, you've just got to get individual libertarians to go out and walk door to door. I mean, hey guys! I mean, <laughs> here, here's the problem. This is the problem. You brought up a great point. The reason Democrats have taken over the United States at the moment, and I'm not fighting for Republicans, I'm a libertarian now, but the reason Democrats have beaten Republicans so bad is the examples of Nevada. Where I live is a beautiful community. And get this one. Ten people during the campaign came and knocked on my door, going door to door to support Barack Obama and all the Democrats down the line. You know how many Republicans knocked on my door? Zero. I got five or six phone calls for Democrats. You know how many phone calls I got for Republicans for John McCain? Zero. And goes without saying, no Libertarians ever knocked on my door and called. How many of those people were in court? They weren't. They were all government employees. They were all firemen and policemen and government employees. <laughs> because that's the way they get their fat salaries and pensions. And by the way, I work seven days a week as an entrepreneur. I have no time to do that. But guess what firemen and policemen work? Three days on, four days off. 